Okay, so we've maybe built up a little bit of intuition about how these lenses work, but now we need an equation so that if you have a piece of glass and you know the radius of curvature on one side, assume it's spherical, on the other side we also have a spherical radius of curvature, we want to know what the focal distance f is. So, we need some conventions. We say that the sine of r, that is the radius of curvature, is positive when the surface is bending or curving towards the source. So this side here with R1 is bending towards the source, the source is over here, so R1 is positive. R2 is bending away from the source, so R2 is negative. So in this diagram we have R1 positive and R2 negative. The equation that we need is 1 on f, f the focal length, that's where we have plane waves coming in this side, all the rays are parallel, they'll all meet up at the focal length over here, so 1 on f is equal to the refractive index of the lens divided by the refractive index of the material around the lens. So if that's air or vacuum, that would just be n divided by 1. So we have the ratio of these refractive indices minus 1. And that's multiplied by the difference on the inverse of the radii of curvature. And you've got to take care of the signs here. It's really important because we have a negative 1 on R2, but for this lens, which is convex on both sides, we have R2 is negative. So this negative R2 actually will make the focal length a little smaller, make it a more powerful lens. This is called the lens maker's equation. F, as I said, is the point where the parallel rays converge over here, and F is positive when it's on the opposite side of the lens to the input light. So this is an example of positive F. Light comes in here, and the focal point is on this side of the lens. If I had my radii of curvature being the opposite, so the lenses here so having convex surfaces, had concave surfaces, what I'd find is I get a, a focal point on the other side of this lens. The other important thing about this equation is that it works for thin lenses. That means that D, the thickness of this lens, must, must be much, much less than the focal length. So this is also known as a thin lens equation. So this is our equation, again, for designing and building lenses. So the focal length f is the distance at which the parallel rays converge to a point. The situation we looked at previously is that we have f positive. In this case, light coming in parallel here gets focused at distance f at this focal point here. But what if instead of having convex surfaces here, we had concave surfaces like in this lens here? So here we have r1 positive, r2 negative. Here we have r1 negative and r2 positive. In this case, light that comes in parallel here will be a bent away like this and the light will be sort of sprayed out rather than being focused down. In that case what we do is we trace these rays back so these dashed lines here indicate some sort of a virtual ray. We trace these rays back to a virtual focal point and this virtual focal point will be on the same side as the source. In this case we have f the focal length is negative and the light appears to come from a point on the same side as a light source. So if your eye is over here and you're looking at this scene, what you would perceive is light coming from a point source here at this focal length f. So let's go back to our simulation now, armed with our equation for how our lens works, and sort of correlate the two, have a look at the simulation in light of that equation. So here's our object that we can move around. Now one of the things we saw in the equation is that the focal length of a lens, that is the distance from these crosses to the lens, depends on the radius of curvature of the surfaces of this lens. So in this example here the radius of curvature is the same on both sides, so R1 is equal to negative R2, and it's a convex, biconvex lens, so they're convex on both sides, that means this one is positive and this one is negative radius of curvature. We can change that radius of curvature if we make the radius of curvature smaller, the focal distance gets shorter, make the radius of curvature larger, the focal distance gets larger. And that is what comes out of the equation. Similarly, we had the refractive index in that equation. We can change the refractive index and see that the refractive index gets bigger, the focal length gets shorter, like that. This is just the diameter of the lens. Uh, we're not worried about that at this point, although we will talk about diameter of lenses later when we deal with diffraction. Now, the image formation part of this we've discussed before. Now there's one thing we dealt with briefly before and that was the formation of virtual image. That is when the object is brought between the focal length and the lens like this. 
this is the object and now rays from this object hit this lens and instead of being focused down on this side into a real image these rays spray out and we get what we call a virtual image and the way we find the position of the virtual image is we trace these rays back to a point where they all meet up and this point turns out is on the same side as the object but behind it and what you'll see also is that this image is now much larger it's magnified so if your eye is over here your eye doesn't perceive this object here it perceives this image here and so you can see that this is a magnifying glass if you use a magnifying glass you hold the object between the lens and its focal point and that causes magnification of the object so you can see things in greater detail and as I bring my object closer to the focal point here my uh, virtual object becomes larger and larger until when I hit this focal point actually what happens is the virtual image becomes infinitely far away and also infinitely large and we end up with just parallel rays coming out here which is what you expect right because when you have light coming from the focal point here hits the lens and is then collimated into straight lines like that.